everyone. Hey, Adlan. Hey, everyone. Cool. And then, yeah, what was also interesting was that we had questions about which BI and notebook application that people are using. Uh, yeah. All right. So, so, well, sorry. So live streams working. So and uh, well, thanks everyone for joining. Uh, I think we had about two hundred people register, which is which is great. Uh, it's great to have you back. We're uh, trying to do this. Uh, in a monthly cadence, and I have the superstar DevRel team members, uh, both Igor and Ad, that are that are with us, um, and uh, excited to talk about the SQL API. Uh, I follow up on the SQL API announcement we made just a few weeks ago. Um, so appreciate uh, not just the panelists but attendees for attending. Uh, so we'll, without further ado, we'll just get started and uh, pretty quickly I'll turn things over to the main event and, and to Igor. Um, let's see. Yeah, just a quick reminder of community code of conduct. If you haven't been to our events before, this is something that we like to remind people of, uh, that we have a, a code of conduct like all oh, good open source communities. You can find details in, in our GitHub repo if you want to read the full text. Uh, and some quick notes about the workshop. Uh, it looks like some of you have definitely attended this workshop. So a lot of these logistical stuff might be familiar to you. Uh, if you have any questions uh, during the workshop, um, we'll have like, you know, two or three Q&A sessions that are scheduled, but you can ask us at any time. Uh, and what we'll also try to do is try to answer them real time while, like, for example, while Igor is presenting, like Adnan or others might uh, help uh, address the answers. I mean, the reason why Q&A tab is great is that we can keep track of which questions that we have answered and which are still outstanding. Uh, so if you can take advantage of the Q&A tab if you're on, on Zoom or if you're on live stream, I mean, feel free to post questions there as well. Um, like we did in previous workshops, we're using Cube Cloud for, for demos. And I mean, all these features, you're not uh, required to have a Cube Cloud, uh, but it just gives us a nice environment to do our workshop and, and, and do demos. And we have a prep guide here uh, that I'll, I believe this is a link uh, that I just posted on chat on Zoom. Uh, if you haven't seen it yet, if you just registered, for example, uh, look through that step-by-step -step guide that Igor put together to set your environment up for to follow along on demos. Um, and you don't need to like a, uh, also the other point I want to make is that you don't need to worry too much about like a capturing a lot of the notes because recording will be posted right after the workshop on our YouTube channel. Uh, so you don't need to like, you know, take images of the, of the slides or, or take uh, furious notes because this will be recorded and the slides will be posted on our event page as well. Um, and uh, like all events, I mean, you'll be getting a post event survey within 24 hours. Uh, we appreciate your feedback. I mean, this really helps us improve in terms of content and logistics, uh, how we can do better going forward. Uh, and then we also have, like we've always done, I will have a question about what future topics you want to hear. Uh, we have a few ideas uh, on what we want to cover in the next few months, but your feedback, I mean, it helps us validate our thinking. Uh, so we would appreciate that. Um, and in terms of, uh, you know, this is a nice, tr nice tradition that we started like a couple of months ago, uh, rather than sending out uh, like a cube merchandise uh, all the time uh, to all over the world. Uh, we decided to start uh, donating to charitable organizations. Um, we started a couple of months ago with, with you know, donating to like UNICEF. Um, I mean, last month was for, uh, you know, supporting tech education for disadvantaged uh, youth. Uh, this month, like celebrating the Pride Month, we selected a couple of organizations called Lesbians Who Tech or OSTEM that we can make donations to. So if you want to vote on which charity, charitable organization that you want to support, uh, we'll honor that. Um, and we'll have a, a workshop, I mean, targeting late July, the announcement will be coming soon. We're, we're trying to figure out uh, the topics uh, and your feedback will be helpful as well. So look for that announcement pretty soon. Uh, so that's it in terms of 
uh, logistical stuff. And I think I'll just turn, I'll stop sharing and Igor, I'll let you take control of things and continue with the proceedings. That sounds perfect. Okay. Um, yeah, let me share my screen then. And I think I'll keep the, view, the current view because it makes sense, you know, it will help me to hop between windows. Okay, uh, really excited about this workshop. Uh, really excited about presenting today. And uh, thanks everybody for, for attending. Thanks Ray for, for a great intro. Thanks Adnan and other uh, cute folks who are also at this workshop and who will be helping uh, with the questions that, that all of you will be, will, will be, will be asking during this workshop. And uh, I think we are running a really nice poll currently. So if you haven't voted yet, please, please do. Uh, uh, I observed that we are getting you know, really interesting, insightful um, data from there. So uh, I, one, one data point that in particular that I remember is that uh, some of you uh, who joined this workshop is not, well, uh, are not working with, with a data notebook or BI tool currently. So hopefully the ones that, uh, the ones that I'll show you will, you know, uh, will become the ones you'll probably pick uh, for your next project or for, for, the, for the project you're currently working on. Yeah, okay. So with all this, let's get started. Uh, and here's what we'll be talking about today. So we'll start with a really short recap of, of, of a few recent updates um, to Cube as a product. So, so you'll, you'll have um, a, con like a wider context uh, behind what's, what we'll be talking today. And then we'll just uh, dive deep into all, the, all things SQL API and BI tools and data notebooks uh, enabled by that SQL API in Cube. So I'll show you how you can just uh, spin up and and the SQL API with Cube and connect to it, and then we'll have a Q and A session. Then we'll explore all the features well available uh, through SQL API, and well, in a way that would be that would be similar to a recap of what you, I guess, all of you already know about SQL and how how you can run queries in there. However, you know there will be uh, there will be a lot of uh, Cube specifics in there, uh, and we'll have a Q and A session after that. After that as well, and uh, and we'll spend the rest of the time uh, tinkering with different uh, business intelligence tools and, and notebooks and answering your questions. So uh, here's kind of a, a really sketchy agenda for this for this workshop. And with this, let's get started. So the first product update that I'm going to talk about uh, really briefly is uh, their Headless BI announcement or seminal blog post that we uh, recently did in our blog. So uh, as you can see here, uh, we, we blogged about, about what, what, what is Headless uh, BI that was done by our CEO and co-founder Artyom. And uh, in a nutshell, we explained that uh, Cube, being a headless BI platform uh, has these four layers uh, that enable lots of lots of use cases and um, put put Cube in a unique position to uh, to be the heart of, of the data pipelines you're building. So uh, first of all, Cube has this kind of universal connectivity to data sources, meaning that it can connect to all popular. Um, data stores like regular databases like Postgres or maybe cloud-based data warehouses like Redshift or BigQuery or Databricks or Firebolt, or it can connect to uh, query engines like, like Presto or any, any flavor hosted uh, Presto that you might have and many other data sources as well. And uh, even more so, Cube can connect to, to multiple data sources at the same time, if you have uh, multiple data sources, well, you can funnel the data from the mall to Cube. And, and then Cube has these four um, layers that provide uh, different values to you. So the data modeling layer allows you to model your, your business metrics 
uh, and, and use cube as a single source of truth from ethics definitions. So uh, any data consumer down their um, pipeline, uh, down the stack, would, would, consu would consume the, the data in a consistent manner, meaning that same metric will obviously uh, uh, you know, uh, evaluate or calculate to the same value, which, is, which might sound trivial, but it's in a silo data pipelines, it's, it's usually the case where you kind of trust a metric uh, coming from one part of a pipeline and another, you have to check, you know, what was the SQL that was run to, to calculate that metric? You know, you don't need to do this with Cube. And also Cube has this access control layer that again serves as a centralized, like single source of uh, truth for your security policy for the access to data. So, so you can um, control which queries are incoming from any of data consumers connected to Cube. And then you can, you can decide whether you allow or disallow certain queries, whether you enforce mandatory filters on some of them, or, uh, or whether you, you know, implement other security fe features such as, you know, um, mm, row level um, security, security control. And then um, Cube has this caching layer uh, which again serves as a centralized uh, way to manage how fresh the data that your data consumers get is. And, and also it allows uh, to make the access to your data fast. And so, so the end users, whether it's data scientists or data analysts working with data notebooks, whether this is business users working with BI tools or whether this is maybe application developers building custom apps on top of uh, one of Cube's APIs, uh, whether they get great user experience or they are end users in, in case of the application developers get great user experience because the APIs uh, will, will be performing really fast, like, like you'll have sub-second latency and uh, uh, decent concurrency uh, enabled by the caching layer. And speaking of APIs, Cube, have, Cube has plenty of them. So uh, the programmatic access for, um, for custom build apps and embedded analytics is enabled by the rest of GraphQL APIs. Uh, and also, if you em embed your KPI tools and data notebooks, or if you, if you work interactively in them, then the SQL API uh, will be the, the best choice. And, and the SQL API essentially is uh, what we'll be focusing uh, on during this workshop. Uh, so uh, here's a graphic way to, to represent what I, what, I, what I was just talking about. So this universal connectivity to data sources, universal connectivity to any kinds of data consumers, including big notebooks, BI tools, and custom build apps, and, and whatnot. And all that possible because of different APIs that uh, Cube has, uh, especially the SQL API, which we'll be talking about. So uh, recently, uh, about a month ago, there was an update uh, to their SQL API, uh, but the whole uh, timeline of events uh, that led to this update and announcement uh, goes like this. So uh, about six months ago, uh, we released this preview version of the SQL API, uh, which enabled uh, some of the scenarios and uh, like and and some of the support for for a number of data notebooks and BI tools. Uh, as, um, for example, like Apache Superset, um, and, and and then we just started exp exploring, you know, uh, how, how you uh, the Cube Cube's users and audience um, put those things in in production, and, and what kind of value you get from them. So, uh, gathering all that and analyzing all that uh, feedback, we invested um, a lot of our product and engineering team resources into refining that SQL API uh, 
both on the engineering and the product side. Uh, so uh, it, got, it got a new SQL execution en engine based on Apache error data fusion, uh, which is an open source um, query engine uh, written in, in Rust. And it pairs really nicely with the rest of the Rust code base uh, that Cube has. But also uh, we rebuilt the SQL API to support the Postgres dialect. Uh, so, so right now uh, you, can, you can use the SQL API that Cube has uh, by sending queries, which are Postgres uh, compatible. It means that now the, the, the SQL API that Cube, that Cube has supports the most widespread and the most reliable and well-known SQL dialect in the world, well, I don't have the hard data to uh, to back, back back that, but but I believe that that's generally true. And uh, with with that part of the update now, uh, the SQL API that Cube has really really uh, can be connected to 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 a large uh, number of BI tools and date notebooks, and that number is um, increasing as we speak because the engineering team is uh, tracking like what kind of a custom extensions or what kind of um, rarely used uh, SQL dialect features, uh, different tools which are not supported yet are using. And then we are adding that, that features and adding that support to, to expand the number of supported tools. So then we got, we got that blog post about the update to SQL API and here, at this point of time, we are in a situation where OneCube supports a lot of BI tools and that notebooks already. Uh, and well, uh, if you wonder like, okay, what, what are those tools? Well, I have a few resources for you. Like you, you, may, you may go to our docs where there is this section on connecting to this visualization tools where uh, the tools are listed uh, and that, and, and, and that list is expanding uh, every day. And then you can go to our uh, blog in the data engineering section, and then you, you'll see the tutorials like, uh, and guided tutorials that we have for different BI tools and notebooks. Uh, and also, as, as we are, as I said, working on, the, um, on adding more tools uh, to SQL API, uh, you can track this issue on, on GitHub and, and even vote or suggest the tools uh, that you'd like to be supported. Uh, but their summary of the supported tools would be would be like this. So we have we have uh, uh, perfect support for Apache Superset and 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 Tableau and Power BI also uh, supported. So feel free to to use them. And then uh, we are currently working on the support for for MetaBase and. Uh, and uh, Google Data Studio is uh, is also in the queue, and and and, and obviously we uh, we've planned and we have now backlog there um, <laughs> uh, the support for for Microsoft Excel and Google Sheets, and uh, one why might even might even speculate that Microsoft Excel uh, should probably be the most uh, wide widely used. Uh, PI tool in the world. So we are getting uh, getting to the point where we'll be supporting uh, Cube as a data source for Excel as well. Uh, but that's not all. Uh, Cube also supports data notebooks. And well, you know that there are more than several dozen data notebooks in the world, but uh, we, it's, it's, it's true that the most popular ones of course, starting with Jupyter, uh, are supported with, with Cube. But then the modern cloud-based um, notebooks like DeepNote, the Hex, or or Streamlit are also um, supported. And if you and if you wanna join your your knowledge for for um, D3GS. Uh, charting library with the data notebooks, you'll you'll obviously try Observable. Uh, but you know many more data notebooks are also supported. Um, by Cube. Okay, so uh, then you may wonder, okay, uh, there is a SQL API that got updated. There are uh, a lot of supported tools. So how would one connect to, to SQL API and, and use it? And 
Well, there is nothing simpler than that. Uh, to enable the SQL API uh, on a cube instance, for example, if you uh, self-host cube or run it in Docker on your machine, uh, to enable SQL API, all, all you need to do is just to supply a single environment variable called kubejs pg sql port uh, and then you specify the port number and, and boom there uh, sql api will be available on that port uh, of course you also need to secure the connection to that to that to that api by providing the kubejs sql user and kubejs sql password environment variables variables and that's all after you supply them and run kube um, you can just uh, use the PSQL uh, utility to that standard utility, you know, standard Postgres client to connect to Cube and um, run queries. Uh, and I think that we're we can even try that ourselves right now. So I'll start. Uh, I'll go out of full screen and just make a note that here in the workshop prep guide you can find the code snippets. And the first code snippet that uh, we'll, we'll, we'll be reviewing and using is this uh, simple Docker Compose file for, for Cube with SQL API. Uh, and, and there is also a script which is, which, which is used in a single uh, schema file. But I already have those, um, those files here in my, in my ID, so I'll just I'll just show you show show them to you here. So okay, uh, here's how we'll be running uh, Cube with SQL API enabled uh, on my local machine. I have uh, oh, thank you Docker. I have Docker up and running on my machine, and here's a Docker Compose file. So we are using the latest uh, Cube image, and we are on top of the regular. Um, API variables that we use to connect to Cube. We are also supplying the um, three needed to enable the SQL API. So here's a port, here's a username, user, and the password. Password. Sorry if that's too obvious. And 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 since we are running everything in Docker, and we know that the SQL API will be exposed at, at this port, we are also mapping this port um, out to the container. Well, for convenience, if you'd like to uh, to use that, and one of the users of the SQL API will be that this another container that depends on uh, on the first one, which which does on the one thing. This is the container that can that that has a Postgres client inside, and it will it after it initializes, it will run this uh, file called script.sh. And inside the script.sh, uh, we have a really simple setup. So when the script runs, it'll just uh, take this query and save it to the creators.sql file, and then use the credentials that, that, that match the credentials we supplied via their uh, environment variable, variables to connect to cube. So we supply the password here, and then we say, okay, we have the cube running at this host. And then his username, his port, and please feed feed this uh, this query to their um, to the Postgres connection that you have. Well, feed it to Cube. Yeah, and that's all. And uh, you may wonder, okay, what do we expect to get to get the output? Well, let's try and see for ourselves. So um, here I got the console right uh, where I can just run something like. Docker Compose up, so I do just that. We have a few containers created, and then we've got some output. Let's explore that output. Um, so um, here we can see that uh, that Cube has started, right? And and we see that the KubeJS server has this version uh, 0.30, um, which which contains a supported um, SQL API, uh, and then we see that there. SQL API itself uh, has started uh, and available is available at port for at port five four three two that we that we uh, specified right and then 
we see the output of the second container that, that we had in our Docker Compose file. So uh, here are the results of running the query that we were reviewing. So it says, uh, okay, here's the table called orders in the schema public that's available through that API. And if you wonder what's, what, what's a table, uh, we can go back and see, okay, here's, here's a cube called orders that, uh, that we had defined in, in, in the data model. And so that, it, this cube is available as a table through the SQL API. So uh, I'll stop the containers right now, come back to my slides, but here's, here's all that you uh, need to do if you wanna enable the SQL API if you're self-hosting cube. Uh, but through since we'll be using uh, mm, many cloud-based BI tools and data notebooks for the rest of the workshop, and since we will probably enjoy some tooling available in Cube Cloud, uh, I'll I'll be using uh, Cube uh, Cube with SQL API enabled in Cube Cloud uh, throughout the rest of the workshop. So um, here's how you can how you can set everything up. Again, in the workshop prep guide, uh, there is this section starting from the very beginning on how you can create a Cube Cloud account and create a deployment, etc. So uh, I'll just quickly go. go I, ha I have already available um, deployment here, but but I can probably quickly go through that one more time. So um, so you know how easy it is to get started with Cube and 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 enable SQL, SQL API in there. So I'm just logging into my account and I have a lot of available um, tenants here, but I'll just, uh, I'll just start with one called examples and then click and create deployment. So let's say we're creating this SQL API workshop uh, deployment. Let's say we're gonna host um, it in AWS. Uh, we can also do it in GCP or uh, sometime soon we'll be able to host it in Azure, uh, but we will we stick with AWS uh, right now is the region. Uh, I'm okay with the default one. We, we are proceeding next, and then we're creating project from scratch. Uh, however, we could also connect connect everything to GitHub. And then we, we, we all will see that, well, Cube will use a database connection. And well, coincidentally, that would also be a Postgres connection uh, because I just remember the dummy credentials for one of, the, one of their Postgres instances here. So I'll just say, okay, let's connect to this demo, demo db examples.cube.dev and then the database is called ecom and then the username is cube and the password is quite short and then i apply these credentials and yeah connection is successful uh, then cube offers to generate their um, the starting point for their uh, for the data schema files uh, and i would gladly accept that offer and boom the data schema is generated and our deployment is spinning up. So uh, that's all we need to do. After roughly a minute, we'll have the deployment available and we'll be able to use their SQL API. But uh, let's get back to, to the slide. So, okay, what else do we need to do when, you know, to connect to the SQL API? Well, we need some, some tool to do that, right? So once we've got our API up and running, we'll, We'll probably need some tool. Let's start with Tableau, right? So uh, I, I don't have any preference for for the tool, honestly. But well, why not start with Tableau? So uh, yeah, this deployment is spinning up, but I already have this um, deployment here, and I'll just say that on the front page you can find the credentials and the connection instructions for different APIs. So here's the REST API and SQL API and GraphQL API. And obviously we'll be focusing on, on, on SQL API. So you can click here and you'll see readily available credentials for the SQL API inside 
this deployment of KeepCloud. And since we'll be connecting to Tableau, we'll just focus on this Tableau tab. Okay, so uh, what about Tableau? Here I have my uh, free trial account for Tableau Online. However, you can also use Tableau Desktop if you like. And I'll start with creating a new workbook. And inside this workbook, I'll instantly offer to connect to a data source, right? So I'll go to connectors and say that they wanna use the Postgres dialect for the data source. And then I'm prompted for the credentials. Well, the same credentials that I already have here. So I'll just copy and paste the server name, uh, the username, and the password here and the database name is db okay i click sign in and i i'm here okay the data source is the connection to data source is set up here okay here are the tables that tableau was able to read from the sql api and that those tables exactly match uh, what we have um under their data schema definition, right? So, uh, so if we look them up, we'll see like the orders and line items and users and um, other data schema files. Yeah, exactly, exactly this list. And well, let's let's just you know explore what's inside this uh, orders table. Uh, I drag and drop it here, and then I switch to the sheet. Um, to do the data exploration, right? So let's say we wanna we wanna know how how many um, how many orders are there. Okay, it's ten k, right? And how 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 can they be split by status? Okay, so they they have uh, there are orders in three different statuses. That that kind of makes sense because we are exploring the econ data set. Okay, but uh, we can also probably split them by say date, right? So what if we, what if we do something like this? Um, oh, we can probably move it like here. Oh, that, that looks interesting. So, so now we are, uh, we we are plotting their year time dimension and 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 we have year year and year right. But what if we want to get more granular? We can press the plus here, uh, and then we have quarter added, and we can we can also say the quarter is you know uh, not something that we want to look at. We can we can we can add months right. So uh, well in just you know maybe 30 seconds, uh, uh, we were able to explore the, the data set of, of the, e, you know, of the e-commerce orders that we have and, and, and visualize and do this kind of multi-dimensional analysis with the statuses, with the, you know, years and months and, and, and now we know the number of, number, number of orders, uh, you know, in each status, uh, each month. Well, that's cool. Uh, but uh, can we try something else? Well, I have something else here. So here's uh, the Apache superset running in a preset cloud, which is you know uh, a managed uh, hosted version of Apache um, superset with batteries. So here's my workspace. Uh, and well, uh, as you as you will see in a minute, it's not that complicated to connect you to Superset as well. So uh, we'll, we'll we'll need to go, okay we'll need to go here under databases and create a new database. And well, we'll say that it uses a Postgres dialect here. Okay, and uh, now we are prompted to to provide the credentials. And well, we can we can do this in the same manner. So I navigate to the, to the review page, SQL API, how to connect, and then I uh, select Apache Superset. Uh, and, and then the procedure is quite similar. So we're providing the host and the port 
and then the database name and yeah, the username and the password. After we do that, we just proceed by clicking this connect button and boom, in a, in a second, uh, we've got our database connection set up. So this is the first step in superset. And the second step would be uh, to define the data sets. Well, you can think of them as tables on, by reading them from, from this um, database, right? So we just say, okay, so here's a database we've set up. Uh, okay, we need this public schema and and then we, we would like to explore orders, right? And then we add this um, orders data set, and then we go to their charts tab. Yeah, okay. So here are the orders. And then we go to the charts tab and and we, we just start plotting the data. So mm, what would be similar to what we already plotted in Tableau? That's probably gonna be a time series chart. Right, uh, so okay, and yeah, we'll obviously we'll be plotting the orders. So, okay, so we create a new chart, and let's say, well, we were we were exploring the number of orders, so we'll just say, okay, let's let's count the orders, split them by status, and well, this is this may be a too granular. We want to have the months just like we eventually had in the Tableau. So then I create this chart and well, here it is, here's the data. So uh, the, the main difference with Tableau is that, well, it's, it's, it's not tiled. It goes to the, and it also not stacked. It goes to the single data utilization, but as you could probably tell the data, Data is the same. So here's what you can do. Uh, you know, if you have a minute and a working uh, cube instance with SQL API enabled, within a minute you can connect it to Tableau or to Superset and explore the data, right? Uh, so here are the steps that we've taken, and then just uh, make a note that when you have the access to, to the slides, you can you can also check the guides that we have uh, about working with those tools, and then well. It gets pretty much, I think it might be getting, you know, kind of, um, you know, um, like, uh, like, like, like I'm going through the same things again and again. So let's, let's for change, try something new. So first of all, uh, uh, let's, let's see how you can use Cube to, how you can, you can connect Cube SQL API to a data notebook. But also let's explore one exciting feature that uh, uh, the Cube has, the Cube Cloud uh, provides for Cube. So uh, uh, my favorite button here in the interface is this enter development mode button, which you can press. And then uh, what would happen is that Cube will create a copy of your of, of, of your APIs, right? It, it will it will it will kind of fork your APIs and and uh, your production API will, will just stay intact and, and work um, as it worked before. However, now you'll be working in so-called development mode with a copy of your data model and the, and the copy of your API on top of the data model. So anything that you'll do here. Uh, will will affect the copy of your API, but not the uh, but not the production API that you had. And as you can see, if you now navigate to the SQL API tab, we will, we will see that the username was updated. Now it now it has this uh, dev dash eager dash uh, some gibberish uh, part, which which is obviously a different username and. Um, here's how a, a data consumer connected to SQL API will know that you are working with a different um, version of the API. So uh, here I have another data consumer. This is uh, the hosted Jupyter compatible uh, notebook 
called Deep Note. Okay, so let's start by creating a new project here, and we'll connect that project to to Cube SQL API. So this is a all this is a fresh entitled project, and and what we can do is we can navigate to integrations and say that we want to add a new integration with a Postgres dialect. And then we can just navigate back here and say, okay, we are not connecting to Tableau or Superset, we are connected to some other uh, tool. So here will be the credentials that we were gonna use. So here's the host uh, and the port and the database and then the updated username and the password. And let's let's give it a name. So it's SQL API running in dev mode, right? So let's call it like this. Okay, we create this this integration and you know just full disclosure i already have a regular like a production version of the same sql api connected here but we'll be working with the with the one with the, that we've just added called sql api um dev mode okay so i go back to this uh untitled new new project and i navigate here to integrations and, and i say okay i want to use uh, this SQL API dev mode uh, connection in this deep node project. So I connect to it and well, I can literally start writing code here, but I what I need is the SQL query. So I'll just create a new new cell here. And well, what can what can be simpler than than and select star query. And since we're already familiar with this orders cube, let's let's run that. So yeah, uh, working with a notebook, you you'll have to wait while while the resources, the hardware resources are provisioned to to a notebook, and then when you're ready, you can you can run the cell. Okay, we'll need to wait for a few seconds, and yeah, here's the data. So. Uh, well, uh, we won't be digging into the details of what we see here right now, but you know, you, as you can see, uh, there are some data uh, that was fetched through the SQL API, and now you can you can explore that. And that was that was a query for the orders queue. Cool. Uh, well, uh, I I didn't run the stopwatch, but but it looks like we're able to. Uh, get deep node connected to SQL API again within 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 a minute or something like that. So with all that said, let me come back to my slides, switch to this QA slide, and let's have a QA session. Cool. Uh, well thanks Igor. I'll take a I'll let you I'll give you a chance to get a glass of water or something. Uh, yeah, I mean, a lot of people have posted questions and I thank you, Adnan, for, I think you've answered quite a few of them already in the process of answering another one. And I'll just paraphrase like one of the questions from Eva and I, I also tried to get a, care, uh, uh, a clarification on, on Zoom as well. Uh, I think the concern is about you know, when you're using the SQL API, what will be, what the response time will be like when you're dealing with like, you know, I think Ivan mentioned like 700 million plus rows. Uh, so like uh, Igor, I don't, I don't know if you want to like sort of, uh, either one of you want to answer that live, but. Since since I already sipped, uh, you know, yeah. uh, from, from a glass of water, right. I can probably take that. So yeah, so, uh, yeah the beauty is that, um, uh, the, all the queries uh, that Cube that Cube is processing, they are okay, processed in the same way. So regardless of the API that you're using, whether it's SQL API or um, or REST API or GraphQL API, their execution time will be the same. And obviously, their production setup and the recommended way of running and using Cube in production is to set up the pre-aggregations within the caching layer. So pre-aggregations is a feature which you can think of as a declarative definition for 
for the cache that should be used to serve your queries. So um, uh, you can define pre-aggregations and, and then uh, any query incoming to any of the APIs will use them and, and your queries will be accelerated. And you can expect that, that with pre-aggregations, uh, uh, query will definitely run in well under a second. It's usually like, you know, for, for complex queries, it might be 200 milliseconds, 300 milliseconds tops. Uh, and, and you can always optimize that. And then the pre-aggregation zones allow for a decent level of concurrency, which is not that critical for interactive data exploration, um, which is usually the case for, for SQL API. But if you have, you know, lots of users accessing your say tableau dashboards well then you would probably be glad to you know to have the support for this concurrency as well and uh yeah probably that that's it for this question and i hope that probably you adam can you know uh, send a link to their pre uh documentation to the chat yeah so so, so yeah so the folks can cool. explore that as well yeah and i think there was a follow-up from Ivan. i Think that you and I know the answer. I mean, although you use Cube Cloud to do this demo, like all of this is available, like what you just demoed is available on self hosted open source. Um, so, I, yeah, so I, I think that was that's sort of a quick one. Uh, I'll also, you know, kind of recap. Uh, so, Igor, you really have a break. Some of the questions that, that were answered on, online by, by Adnan, I mean, there are questions about. Uh, segments and I mean, are these basically Boolean dimension? Yet the answer is is, is yes. And then I then provided a link to the documentations. Um, there was a question on on joins. Yeah, I, I think Igor, you'll be talking about this uh, uh, further down the road. I mean, it's I think joins is only uh, possible through proxy dimension, but this is something that we're working on uh, as a future. Uh, as a future feature, I guess that's hard to say. Um, and I think last one, there was some questions about, uh, I mean, this is a popular question, no matter which workshop we do, uh, permissions, access restrictions. Uh, and Adan, I think you provide a couple of links there, including uh, RBAC. Um, yeah, this uh, is so, this yeah, is yeah. this is a moment where, 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 again, I'm really happy to say, you know, I'm really happy to, to, to say that we, we are working on our open source uh, software, which is which is really great. So, uh, yeah, of course, of course, you can you can use Cube as you like. You can self-host it, and and, and that's that's what you know the majority of uh, the of, of Cube's audience uh, does, right? But 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 also if you're if you have if you're working in a team, if you think that some additional like you know to Features that might enhance your development workflow, like this dev mode, or or some some additional security features like like the compliance with SOC two, uh, might be of use to you. Then you can just you know start using Cube with Cube Cloud, and uh, I believe that's probably the easiest and the most comfortable way of using Cube. However, you know uh, I run I also run Cube in Docker all the time and I enjoy it. And uh, yeah, uh, as for the questions about pre aggregations and and their kind of metrics defined in a schema and then used in the data consumer. Uh, we'll cover this just in a few minutes in the workshop. So, so everybody, everybody just yeah. rest assured. Yeah, I think for the interest of time, I would probably want to move on and we'll address uh, questions uh, as you're speaking. So cool. Igor, if you cool. don't mind, cool. I'll, I'll let you continue. So. Yeah, thank you, Ray. Okay, then let's dive deep into the SQL API features, right? Uh, so uh, I'll show you a few slides. Uh, well, actually, <laughs> just 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 maybe a couple of slides. So uh, what we'll be reviewing right now is uh, what is available through the SQL API. So what are the entities that you can access through that, and then what kind of queries you can run against the SQL API. And since Cube is a tool that you use to run. Uh, analytical queries, which, which as you obviously know, are usually aggregated. Uh, then, you know, what will happen if you run a non-aggregated query? We'll explore that. And then we'll, uh, we'll check how, you know, as um, SQL gurus say, selections and projections work with Cube. So uh, we'll go through all, this, uh, all these features and how 
how they map how how the features of SQL API map to this to the features uh, of the REST API. The cube also provides it if you if you have a chance to to dig deep into that. Okay, so uh, that that's the moment for me to stop sharing the slides and go to deep note because. Uh, in addition to this untitled project, I also ha ha have another project called the workshop here. So um, let's see what we have here. Okay, so um, I'll probably I'll probably collapse. Okay, I won't be doing that. Okay, so uh, we have a number of cells here with different different queries. So let's let's start exploring. So uh, I'll run the first cell. Uh, and while the hardware is starting, I'll just start with saying, so, okay, what is available through the SQL API is what you have defined in your data schema. So if, if your data schema contains cubes, then those cubes will be uh, exposed as tables and they will be available through the SQL API. So uh, he, here I've run a pretty much standard uh, Postgres query to fetch the available, you know, tables and, uh, and uh, within their within their PG tables uh, service table, and that's what your uh, BI tools would probably do. That's what Tableau and that's what Superset and Power BI uh, do when they want to fetch the tables. And well, you can do it as well, and you can see that uh, the cubes are exposed as tables, and you can you can query them. And then, uh, and then, what, what about the cube members? Uh, the members within cubes, namely measures, dimensions, and obviously segments, they are all exposed as columns of, the, of those tables, right? Uh, so here, here you can see that I'm running this select star from orders query, and uh, we can we, we, we can see uh, five columns within the result set, right? So it's it's a count and number and status and created that and completed that columns. And if we navigate back to to Cube Cloud and to the schema and look up their uh, the schema definition for the orders, uh, we'll see that well we have this count and number measures defined here. And then we have this status and created that and completed that dimensions, well, you can spot that we also have this ID dimension, but it is marked as primary key. And that's why it's uh, it's automatically also marked by, by the attribute shown false. That's why it's not um, shown here. Uh, but well, here are the two measures, here are the three dimensions, and they all exposed as columns here. And, and well, what you can, what you can do is, is to test how you can also work with uh, segments. So here I have this code snippet where I've defined a segment. So I'll just uncomment it. And if if you if you don't want to type that in yourself, you can go to the prep guide, and here under the development mode changes, you'll you'll have those code snippets. So you can copy them and pass them into the respective uh, files in your Cube Cloud deployment. So, okay, uh, I, I'll save the changes. Uh, we'll need to wait for, for maybe a couple of seconds when this schema is compiled and their API is updated. And, and then uh, we can go back and, and rerun this cell. Uh, and well, <laughs> as you can note, nothing happened, right? We still have those, um, those five, uh, columns in the result set. However, if we uncomment this line uh, and if we run it, uh, we'll, we'll see that, uh, oh, okay, we'll see an error. And that's because uh, now the cell is, is connected to the SQL API source, right? But we, we, we are changing the, the schema in dev mode. That's why we need to connect to the SQL API in dev mode, right? So, okay, let's do that. Uh, we'll need to, 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 to wait a couple of seconds while the hardware is restarting, but once it's done, uh, we, can, we can rerun the cell 
and we'll see there that the result set has changed. Well, come on, deep note. The hardware is starting. Yeah, okay. Uh, let's maybe wait for, for, for another second. Oh, I can reload the, the whole page. Nevertheless, I, I think I think that working with with a hosted uh, notebook, you know, when you have a multi-user uh, environment, is, is is more convenient than you know, say, setting up a Jupyter for for for, for many users at the same time. But anyway, we now have the notebook ready and the SQL API in dev mode connected to the cell, and then I, I rerun this query and let's see what the result set is. Okay, we can see that now we now the result set shows only their uh, only their data with, with the status that equals to shipped, right? Because uh, we were we we have added their segment shipped to the query and 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 only querying for the rows which for for which shipped equals true. And you can see here that right now there are like. 3000 something rows in the data set. And if we remove this, uh, this where, where statement and rerun this cell once again, we'll see that, well, there are, there are orders in different statuses in this result set. And well, there are almost 10,000 rows in the result set. Okay, so here's how you can, how you can use segments and here's, uh, how your measures and dimensions are exposed as basically the columns um, of the tables. And then let's uh, let's let's see how you can how you can uh, do selection or how you can filter uh, the row the rows from the result set. Well, um, obviously everything that you can do, or almost everything that you can do with the REST API, you can also do with the SQL API. And uh, there is some kind of feature parity here. So uh, in the REST API, you can add filters and well, you can filter uh, the, the results with where statements. You can order results obviously with order by and you can limit what, which rows you see with the limit statement. Quite obvious for, for the ones of you who already, you know, no SQL, right? But let's me show show that. So I ran this query like select count and status from orders, and and then decided to group everything by status. Okay, he, he, here are the counts of rows in different different statuses, right? And well, what if uh, what if we want to filter them? We can say that we uh, that we want to just shift and completed orders. Here they are. Uh, we, now, we now have only uh, two rows in the result set, and well, the the row with the completed status goes as first. Okay, what if we want to reorder them? Uh, we add this order by statement, and now the shipped row goes as the first one. Cool. And then, uh, what if we want to get only one row? We add the limit. Boom. So here's how you can do the very basics of kind of selection. So obviously, as you could expect, where statements and order by statements and lint statements, they all work with Cube SQL API. And then, uh, and then um, you, we, can, we can dive deeper into that. So obviously, uh, you, you would like not only to filter uh, on on segments, uh, but but you can also want to do some complex uh, expressions, right? So you can you you can you can you can do that by joining them with these boolean operators, and then uh, there are there are logical um, operators supported, and obviously is null is not null, like and in are also that you can run and use. So I've I I've I've created maybe a nonsensical 
but working uh, expression here underwear. And as you can see, uh, he was able to, you know, run it effortlessly. And, and, and now we are selecting this kind of 6,000 something. And if we start, you know, uh, dropping the, or commenting down the statements from here, we'll probably uh, see a different result. So let me run something like this. Okay. Now we have less. Cool. Uh, that's all for selection. What about projections? Well, that would be trickier, but I think interesting. So um, obviously, uh, the the query, the most basic query is a star projection. Well, projection is what you uh, what you are selecting as columns in your query. So the star projection is basically the projection that that. You know, allows you to select um, all their available columns, right? So obviously the star projection works, and then and then uh, you can wonder, okay, what would happen uh, if I will be combining uh, measures and dimensions in a query? Well, what would happen is that everything will will work just great. So uh, as you can see now, we, we've selected their count measure and status dimension in the query. And well, you, 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 can, you can also spot that the data is grouped by, by the dim dimension, right? So as cube is always, you know, as, as you, because cube runs analytical queries, cube is always grouping uh, by their by the dimensions, right? By the old dimensions in your query. But, you know, for the ease of your data exploration, so you don't need to always write like group by and then list all their dimensions. So maybe just say group by one, two, three, four. Uh, you can just omit that and Cube will apply the group by to your query automatically. Uh, and when you're, when you're using these ungrouped statements, you can, you can just, you know, you can just specify your dimensions and you can specify your measures by their bare names, which is very convenient, right? So for this really simple SQL query, you get your three really simple result set. And then, and then, okay, you may wonder what would happen if, um, if you don't rely on this automatic group by addition mechanism, but just uh, provide group by by hand. Well, it won't work. We'll see an error. And you may wonder, why is that? Uh, but, but if you're, you know, and maybe not a SQL guru, but just, you know, uh, but just a very curious person, you, you, you might, might already know the answer. Uh, well, because the projection reference is a non-aggregate value. It means that, well, uh, obviously the status is a dimension that we are grouping by. But then, uh, what is count? If we are grouping by status, uh, the, re the rest of their projections in the query should be uh, aggregates, right? But count is not an aggregate, hence the error. And well, obviously, you can you can uh, compose a query that would uh, that would have the group by uh, statement and that would work. So let's run this one. Uh, and as you, okay, I need to comment out this one before. Let's run this one. And as you can see, it works. And it works because we, uh, for all non-grouped um, projections in the query, we uh, we have the, we have wrapping aggregate functions. So right now for the count measure, uh, we have the count aggregate function, right? And of course, if you if you've been working with Cube, you know that the um, the measures that Cube uh, allows you to define, they can have different types. So so Cube SQL API supports different aggregate functions for different kinds of your 
uh, measures. So for count, for, for count measure, you will say count for, for count distinct or count distinct approx um, measures, you'll just say, okay, count distinct. And then if you have a minimum or a maximum um, measure type, you will use minimax. So, so the queries that you're running, they, you know, they are sound and they look like naturally. And then you may wonder, okay, uh, what if I just don't want to bother, uh, you know, just, you know, going back to my um, data schema and just looking up the type or, you know, what can I do? Well, you have an option. Uh, there is this kind of wild card, wild card aggregate function called measure, which uh, KubeSQL API also provide, provides. And, 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 and that aggregate function basically works with with the measures of any type so if you want to compose a group query then you put all your um, dimensions in group under group by in the order that you would like them to be and then and then you just um, wrap the rest of your measures in the query with measure and everything works uh, so as you can see here, we, we've got again the same simple data set with a status uh, column and the column called measure, then balances orders dot count. And you may wonder, okay, but what if I, you know, for the sake of, uh, you know, of the simplicity, uh, you would like these names to, to, look this, to look different. Well, then, you can use aliases. So, um, so you can say that any any part, any projection in your query can can be marked as as, and then you can provide an alias, and then you'll you'll see something like my count here. So here's the most basic recap of the features that uh, that the SQL API uh, provide to you. So I, I quickly jump to the next slide to talk about their things that are not perfectly supported yet, uh, but 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 they, I'll provide some pointers on what you can do with that. So uh, obviously uh, the REST API the Cube has, uh, it, it's quite mature and it has some features that, that we've been developing over time, like data planning or the support for for providing custom time zones. So this, these features are not yet uh, in, in, in the SQL API, and there are uh, issues on GitHub where you can uh, subscribe for notifications and where you can track the progress um, uh, so you know when they are shipped. Uh, and there's also um, a kind of a limitation around joins. Well, obviously, uh, uh, there, the correct way to put it is that, well, you currently you cannot uh, write a query that would have something like select something from orders left join some other queue uh, but uh, but but despite that you can use joins with SQL API and um, there is this approach that's called um, using proxy dimensions or just references to other cube members that I'll quickly uh, show to you. Okay, so when you're working with a data model uh, with, in Cube, when you're composing your data schema, you, you can not only reference the columns in the row data, but you can also uh, reference other measures and other dimensions uh, of the same cube or of other cubes within your uh, data model. And that's very powerful. Uh, thing so here what here how how you can say reference this orders that count measure within some other queue that's not orders and that would, would be called then you can create kind of a proxy dimension or a proxy measure in in the cube that you want to join with other queue and then cube will will do the join under the hood for you here's how it works so Mm, let's say that mm, let's say that we want to uh, explore the data about users and we want to know how many orders every user did 
and how many products uh, were in, or, or what were the products, product names in those orders. And well, if we go back to our notebook, well, we have a query in here, right? Uh, let's select this demo. Uh, yeah, here's the data in our users cube, right? So we have we have some folks from from different uh, cities who apparently made made made, made some orders. Uh, but what would we do if we want to know how many orders they 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 did? Uh, well, naturally we would probably say something like select blah, 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 from users, left join orders on other user ID equals user ID, et cetera. But uh, here's how you can do that with Cube um, currently. So um, let's let's go to our users Cube and and have a look here. Uh, here's, a, here's a measure that we can define. So this measure is called orders count. And what it does, it's really, it's really simple. What it does, it just references the count measure of the orders cube, right? So if you go to the orders cube, you'll see that count measure here. And in the users cube, we are just reference, referencing it. So we are creating this kind of proxy measure. Uh, and uh, cube is smart enough to, to understand, okay, if there's this user's cube and then we are referencing a measure from the order's cube, then a join must happen under the hood. So um, I've uncommented this one and I saved uh, the changes. I can also uncomment this proxy dimension and just save it again. And then when I go back to deep node, uh, I can run, run not only this query, but also this one. So you can see we're also querying for first last name in the city, but we're also querying for the orders count from this SQL API in dev mode. So let's see what the orders count is. Boom. Okay, so now we see that, well, every user has an, has a count associated uh, with a user. Well, if, if you wonder, okay, but, uh, what happens uh, under the hood, then like, where is the join? I can show you that. Uh, we can go here to the query tab, which is available in Cube Cloud. And, uh, and here you'll see the query that we've just run, right? So it's uh, here's the time. Okay, so uh, we can navigate to the SQL tab. And we'll see that, okay, we created for the first name and last name in the city and the count of orders. And then Cube joined the orders table and the users table uh, in, the, in, the, in the original uh, database to, to bring the data, data that, you, that you wanna have. So uh, yeah, here's how it works. And then you probably remember that we also added a proxy dimension, right? Uh, which, which we just call product name, right? So uh, we can also query for that. Okay, let's wait. And yeah, here are their, here are their product names. And again, if you wonder, okay, what, what happened under the hood? Like uh, you, can, you can go to queries, you can look the query up and you can, you, you, and you can see that, well, for that query to be executed, actually three different tables were joined by cube. And well, uh, one might argue that that's not a very natural way to be joining data. However, um, as, a, as a person working with cube a lot, I would say that uh, what you would generally wanna do is to, is to create a data schema which makes sense uh, at, 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 at the domain level, right? So you want to build that's such such a set of, of, of cubes with, with such measures, measures and dimensions and segments that that makes sense. Uh, and, 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 and then you would probably run the really simple queries uh, referencing those those things 
uh, and and you get complex data. So so uh, so uh, with this proxy measures and dimensions that, that I've shown you to uh, as an example of how joins can can be implement, implemented. Uh, you can see that you can hide a lot of complexity within the cube's data model. So uh, so it's so it's so that complexity is not exposed to. Uh, to your notebook or to be, to your BI tool, and obviously your measure and dimension definitions they can be much more complex than than we have in our example schema, right? Uh, and that the all the tall complexity will be hidden from the end users. Okay, so that's all for for this section, and let me switch to the Q and A slide again. Oh, thank you, Igor. Uh, we've got about 15 minutes to go, uh, but I think all, all the questions pretty much have been answered online. Uh, Adnan, I, sorry to put you on the spot, but are there, were there a couple that you want to sort of highlight? Uh, I think uh, people hopefully have read through all the answers from you and, and Pavel as well, but if you want to highlight a few uh, just to reiterate uh, your or expand on your answer, that would be great. Yeah, definitely. So uh, first and foremost, there were a few questions around joins in SQL API. Um, we did send send y'all links for that so you can read about uh, that in the documentation, but Igor just now explained it in, in, in more detail. So you got a proper explanation there from Igor uh, now in live as well. So that should be good. Um, that should be good on that. Um, and I, I reckon that was the, the main thing we should highlight. Cool. Uh, yeah, and like I said, we got about like now like about fourteen minutes left. Uh, like, how would how should we, uh, Igor? Like, what are your thoughts on? Uh, I think we got two like a yeah. decent topics like pre aggregations and multi tenancy. Uh, but I'll let you. I mean, I'll let, obviously, let you take the lead and uh, spend the rest of the time. But yeah, yeah. Thank you. Ray. I think I think yeah. what we what we can do is just to well since we've got a question about that uh we can talk about about pre-aggregations and and then maybe spend the rest of the time uh answering, answering the questions i know i'll, I'll, also, I'll also talk about multi yeah uh but but mm -hmm. i think we are we are uh we are running the workshop for more than an hour probably it would right. be a grueling experience for us to go on and on and on indefinitely so let's just cover the things that were asked for first yeah okay. and if, so, if we run out if we run out of time like we can do like a separate demo at like a monthly call or something just as a follow-up so uh, yeah I, I agree with you we should answer the questions and just that should be our priority cool yeah and, and that means that means folks that you you, you should continue Piling up your questions in in, in the Q and A uh, tab, right? <laughs> so please do. We'll be happy to answer them. Okay. So pre aggregations. Um, as I said, pre aggregations are a feature of Cube's caching layer, and that feature is extremely powerful. This is something that uh, we are really, well, at least I am, uh, really really proud of, and I think this is one of the yeah, most exciting features of Cube. Well, uh, and what I'm most excited about is their value or their outcome of applying pre-aggregations to your data model. So basically, uh, if you have a query running for any time, you know, any query latency, then you'll be able to minimize that latency and make it be, you know, way under a second. Uh, with pre-aggregations, it's, it's Usually, that for 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 a large data set in any data source for any query, you'll you'll get latency of two or three hundred milliseconds, and well, something like you know one hundred per second concurrency or even more, uh, and that can scale. So let's see how we can how we can uh, use pregations with SQL API. Well, because you can you can you can use pregations with any API. So um, let me see what I got here. So here's our notebook, and oh yeah, oh yeah, and I have another cell here. So I'll obviously switch to the dev mode here, and and let's run this query. So 
when I run this query, we, we've got some we've got some results, right? And uh, uh, well, this is the cities in which our users live and accounts for them. If we navigate back to KubeCloud to their query step where all the query stats are present, and we and we look the query up here, it is. It says that it's, it, 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 it's, it was run, it was run uncached, which means directly against the database, uh, source database. Yeah, so here's the SQL that was run, pretty much the expected one. And well, the duration of the, uh, of the, the obviously the latency that it was, um, it was required to run the query, that's, that's quite substantial, right? So uh, we can even, you know, navigate here and see how the latency is break, broken down by different steps of execution. But I'm more interested now in looking at this and this um, warning sign here, which says, well, you can use pre-aggregations, right? And here's how you can do that. Let's navigate to the workshop prep guide. And here's a snippet that you can apply to your data schema. And I think I already have that snippet here. So I can go, go to the users and I just uncomment the same snippet. And well, this is probably the simplest form in which you can, you can set up pre-aggregations. So what you, what you say, hey, I wanna have a single pre-aggregation defined for that queue. Well, you, have, you can have multiple, uh, but let's start with one. And then you have just to list the list the measures that you'd like to be to be pre-aggregated alongside the dimensions that you want to pre-aggregate it, uh, and that means that every any query that includes a subset of listed measures and dimensions uh, will match the pre-aggregations so will be accelerated uh, by that pre-aggregation. Well. I'll be frank, the pre-aggregation match rules are slightly more complex than that, but but probably that's uh, uh, it's not something that we should be digging uh, into right now. And and the last part here is this refresh key definition, you know, which we just says, okay, uh, let's let's make sure that the pre-aggregations will be uh, built asynchronously and refreshed every hour. And obviously, Cube has the flexibility to allow pregations to be rebuilt, say, based on the, an arbitrary SQL statement, but that's enough for, for, for our case. Okay, so here's the definition. I'm saving the file. And well, if you're, if you're working in Cube Cloud, you can then navigate to the pregations uh, tab here, and you'll see your pregation uh, user's main. And then, and then you can you can even trigger uh, that the building of that pre-aggregation manually. Well, uh, and and I did that because we are in development mode right now, where the automatic refresh is disabled, uh, and the pre-aggregations are built either you know manually when I press this or uh, on demand when I run the query, and. And but of, but of course, when you exit the dev mode and and go into production mode, then pre-aggregations will be um, built automatically. Uh, okay, so let's run our query again. So select count and city from users. Boom. Well, I don't know. I don't know if <laughs> I don't take, I don't I don't honestly remember what was the latency the first time I ran this pretty much simple query and the data set is not that large. But let's use the diagnostics and the metrics uh, from KubeCloud to to analyze whether it, it ran faster or slower than without pregregations. Okay. So I go here, go to the query stop here. And let's wait for the data to appear. And well, um, now you can see that the item for the item for, for this query. Okay, it says uh, that it was accelerated with pre application And well, we can go here uh, under the SQL tab and we'll see that, well, now that query is 
running not against the um, the raw data in the data, in the Postgres database, but it's running against the pre aggregations because internally Q saves pre aggregations in this performant distributed data store, which 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 is development developed developed by the Cube team called Cube Store, and and it enables uh, the pre aggregations to work really fast. So yeah. Uh, it ran against pre aggregations, and here was the duration of the query. Well, and honestly, uh, you would say that they would probably say, okay, what's the difference? <laughs> it was 300 milliseconds here, 300 milliseconds there. Well, that's true, that's the same for this really simple query and for this data set. However, uh, say if we got a data set with billion uh, records, and uh, if we if we go to deep net and run a query against the data set raw and, and then against, against the same data set with the pre aggregation setup, uh, the latency for pre aggregations will stay uh, at this level, like 300 milliseconds or, 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 or less, but the latency for, for, for the non pre aggregated data set it would be. Uh, surely substantially more. So if you're, if you're, if you're, Using a regular database, I can't predict how how large that latency would be if you're running um, if you're running your query against big query or Snowflake. Then it should it would probably be something like three or five seconds, right? But but again, it would be substantially more and probably more costly than with pre aggregations. Okay, and let's try to gather some more data. I, I'll run this query once again a few times. So, so let's see if, if the latencies we are getting here are consistent. So I'll also update this, um, this page. Oh, and we, we see that some fresh data is incoming. Okay, let's wait for this page to be fully updated. But, but yeah, the, the next query that I ran, it took just, you know, 120 milliseconds. And come on, let's see, let's see the stats about the other two queries. Okay, now it's like 100 something milliseconds, uh, way less than 300. Okay, so, Here's, here's the power of pre aggregations and here's how you can use it with a SQL API. Nothing changes for your BI tool or for your data notebook, except the latency, you're getting the results faster. And of course you need to account for the uh, network latency and, 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 and the time required to transfer the data set from from cube to notebook and then for it to be displayed here but 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 you know for for a substantially sized data set that would be uh, something that you would notice okay and I see that we are getting close to 90 minutes so I'll just spend one minute talking about the implementation of multi-tenancy long story short multi-tenancy is a feature that allows you to process their queries coming from different tenants or different users uh, in a different manner. It, it helps, it, it allows you to customize how your um, queries are processed, which cubes are available, which, which measures and dimensions are available. Uh, you can customize the pre-aggregation settings. You can customize the um, security, like access control layer. And well, multi-tenancy works really great with all the APIs and it's also supported in the SQL API. There is this uh, page in the SQL API docs about custom authentication that that has a code snippet that shows how you can how you can provide the security context through the SQL API. But in a nutshell, what you would do um, you would you would set up uh, your connection in a way that that you'll provide um, you know, provide a username and a password, and then Cube, Cube can fetch the data from your external service that would, would, would authenticate that user 
And for every authenticated user, that service would provide the security context that mean additional data that you'll be able to use within your data scheme and cube configuration. And yeah, uh, that's probably the shortest way to cover that. Cool. And yeah, I, I, yeah, like let's plan on doing like a full blown demo in in, in the monthly call because uh, I I think there were some questions about like authentication in general anyway. So I think this will be a Good demo to show, but sorry, I interrupted you. I'll let you wrap things up. Uh, right. So uh, probably, probably it would be as simple as just saying that. Well, uh, first of all, I hope that was um, helpful and insightful, and I hope those uh, those one, one one of you who already use some data uh, notebooks and BI tools would 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 happily use them with Cube. And also I hope that the ones that I've shown to you might be of use uh, for those ones who haven't done the choice yet. And uh, yeah, please please explore kind of a dig deeper into the SQL API details in, in the docs. Also please check their announcement about the expanded BI support and obviously the data engineering section uh, within our blog. And definitely, please leave your feedback in the post-workshop survey and, and, and or just go to Slack and uh, ask your questions, leave your feedback. You can ping me uh, there or any other Cube member. And let's talk about SQL API and BI tools and data notebooks there. Uh, yeah. Cool, awesome. Yeah, I mean, just one minute over 90 minutes, but I hopefully people are okay with that. And I think that was one outstanding question from Ling Jiang. Um, yeah, I think we probably want a little bit more context on the question. So hopefully we can follow up on, on Slack uh, on that question. Uh, yeah, but we'll uh, thank you, Adnan, Pavel, and, and Igor. And uh, thank you everybody for attending. I'm sticking with us for 90 minutes and we'll see each other again in, in about a month. Thank you, Have folks. Have a good day, everyone.